This is a video about MATLAB 3D plotting. It's an extension on another video I made. I had a subscriber send in a question and they were asking, given certain data in this format, so they've got some X, some Y, some Z values, and then an ideal color for each of those. So they gave me a couple sample points and asked if I could help them do some 3D graphing with those. So I thought I would do a video on that. I'm going to start out and just plot the first point. So this is going to be a plot three because we've got three different values, the X, the Y, and the Z. And I'll pass in each of those. And then I want the color to be yellow based on what the user gave me. And just a single Y will be a good abbreviation for making that yellow. Now, you will be not very happy when you run this because a single yellow plot point is so small you can't really even see it. Um, so the very first thing I'm going to do to make this visible is turn it into a diamond instead of just a single point. So to do that, I would put another optional argument saying, well, actually, I can combine it with the color. I could say, make it a yellow diamond. And now if I run this script, yellow doesn't show up very well on here, but there, I'm going to make it red just so we can temporarily see it. And then there should be a very tiny red diamond right there. So the yellow does work. It's just very similar to the white background. So just to make it easy to see the next point, um, let's make that a diamond as well. And that one was a green diamond. And it's got um, these X, Y, and Z values. And when I run this, I'm only going to end up seeing the green diamond and it's really tiny on here. So I could also make it larger to make it easier to see that. So I'm going to change the marker size of both of these to 10. So, and then let's talk about why we're only seeing one diamond when we run this. I only see the green one. Um, with the plot and the plot three command, every time you run a different plot or plot three, it's going to wipe out the old graph unless you have a hold on. So I'm going to put the hold on command in there and I'm hoping for um, two different diamonds and I'm going to make these even larger so we can easily see those diamonds. And I run this and the green diamond is showing up in a position that's right on the Y axis. So another thing I'd like to do with the graphing is to specify what values I want on the X and the Y axis. And I'm going to do that with an axis command. And I can look at the data here and my X values just go from positive three to negative three. And I want some white space on either side. So I'm going to say negative five to positive five will work for the X values. And for the Y values, I can see they go from 25 and 75 is the largest one I see. So I'm going to just round that in zero to a hundred will be those values. So, but all, I should be able to see two diamonds now. The yellow one's still really hard to show up because of the color choice, um, but I've got a green one there. And then my yellow one was at three on the x-axis and then 25. I can see a very faint little yellow diamond there. Um, let me also, to make them easier to see, change not only the marker size, but the marker color. So there's a marker face color and I'll have that match the color of the outline of the diamonds. So yellow for the first one and green for the second one. And then I could end up using all those other points, but I just wanted to try it with a few points first. And we run it again, and now the yellow one's showing up better. So I could um, fill in, and the user that sent me this question has seven points in total. So I'm gonna pause the video and type out the code for the next points. Okay, so we've got from the comments I got from the YouTube video, there were seven different points. So I have seven different points that I want to plot in three dimensions, and they all have the X, Y, Z, and the color. And I've changed the colors from yellow and green and red to the single character MATLAB abbreviations for those. And 
I'm a fan of the diamonds, but you could make these squares or circles or some other marker size. So this is we've got what we've got so far. Um, my marker sizes for the first two, I had 20, and then the new ones I typed in were just 10. So just to look at those seven points, and just those seven points only, this is what the script looks like. Uh, maybe let me make it so it's all visible at the same time. And so I'll run it again, and that's the seven points. And the user also said, like, could we turn it into something else, like maybe a surface graph? Well, first let's just look at this, and I'm only really looking at the X and the Y axis right now. And it is definitely a good practice to always label your axes. So I could type in X label and say, I want to call this X axis and Y label, and we'll label that the Y axis. I always tell my students to do clear and CLC at the beginning of their scripts to um, clear the screen, the command window, and get rid of any um, variables that might be left over from other programs. So I'm gonna run this again. It just has labels on the X and the Y axis. And we had X, Y, and Z, so why am I just seeing it in two dimensions? Well, if you go in the command window or in your script and you type in view three, you can get a three-dimensional view of that graph. So now I can see um, I don't have the Z axis labeled, but you can look at it in either two or three-dimensional view. So I can go back to two. Okay, so that, I don't think it's 100% what the user was looking for because my video that they commented in was on surface plots. So how would I take this and change it into a surface plot? Well, with the surface plot, we create um, kind of like a chicken wire where we've got, um, instead of just a single line, uh, we have a, more of a plane. We need enough points to create a plane. So I'm gonna take, what was given to me here with my X values and my Y values, and I'm gonna turn that into like a plane. So I'm gonna pause the video again because I'm gonna do some typing. Okay, where we left off was I had seven different data points and I wanted to see, is it possible to turn this into a surface graph? So I took all of my X values, the very first values here, and made a vector that just is all those X values. I did the same thing with the Y values and, and the same thing with the seven Z values, but I'm not really gonna use the Z values right away. So if I have all these X values, that's just, that's just a line. Um, and the same thing with the Y values, that's just a line. We wanna create these two lines into a plane and we can do that with the mesh grid command. So this mesh grid command will take all of the values in X, like the three, and it'll end up duplicating that three and making seven of them, one for each of those Y values. And the same thing with all the X values. And it'll take the um, 25 inside the Y and duplicate that so there's one for each of the X values. So at the end of that, I'm gonna pass into mesh grid X and Y lowercase, I'm gonna get X and Y and I just name them uppercase so they're different. And if you look at your X values, um, capital X values, it's a repetition of the, the lowercase X values, only you've got one for each of those seven Y points. And the same thing with Y. We started with this Y and our uppercase Y is this. Um, and then what we get here is We've got this um, like chicken wire. If you were to connect those, it'd look like chicken wire and you can view it in 2D or 3D. So I'll view it in, in the three dimension. So here we've got the foundation to turn this into a surface plot. To do that, we just need to incorporate the Z values. And here's where I kind of went beyond what I was given. I got the Z values, seven of them, and they're in a vector here, but that's just gonna be a line and we need a whole plane. We need a Z value for all of the 49 different X and Y values we have. So how to turn this Z into 49 different Zs? Well, I went ahead and said, well, let's make capital Z 
the same thing as if I use the ones command, that'll create a seven by seven grid of just the number one, but I could multiply all of those values by the, the Z values that we have here. So ones with just the seven, I just get a bunch of ones. But if I multiply it by um, the Z's I'm given, then I'm gonna repeat each of these Z values I was given uh, seven times for each of those. So we have 49 different points. And if we have all those, then we don't have to just plot using X and Y, I can comment this line out, and we can now, we now have enough to do the surface plot. So I'll do surf and then X, oops, X and Y and Z, and I'll go ahead and run that and we've got a surface plot. Um, because I had hold on, it's showing, it's showing that last plot, but let me close that and run it again. And that's a 2D view of it. Let's get a 3D view of that. And we have our surface plot. So with the surface plot, it's just using the default colors. It's not taking into account the yellow and the green and the red and the blue, et cetera, that was given here. That's probably more advanced. And I think um, for this particular surface plot, we know that at 300, um, the Y value of 300, we want yellow and at 500, we want green, but what about 400? What about 350? So I don't think we, I, my guess is the intention of this problem wasn't to um, have a surface plot, um, but if it was, then you'll have to figure out how to color this um, based on the colors you see there. And coloring the surface plot is a little bit more difficult. I'll just show a little bit about how to color that. Um, but not necessarily use the values that were given here. So to color the surface plot, you're gonna pass in a fourth value that's, I'll just call it colors. So here's the colors you want. But it needs a color for all of those 49 points in this case. And in fact, it needs um, the how much red and blue and green do you want for all of those 49 points. So it ends up being, I'm gonna create a colors variable and it's going to end up being I'm just gonna put a colon to say fill in all the X values fill in all the Y values and the Z value here is going to be how much uh, red I want and let's say we want this to be a completely red surface plot so I've got we've got a seven by seven I'm gonna fill in um, ones for how much red I want and then we'll say for how much green we want next, none, no green there. And I wanna say how much blue do we want? Let's do no blue. And if I run this, um, what I did here is create, um, it's actually, if we look at the size of that, the size of the colors, vector it's a seven by seven by three so for all of the 49 points there's actually three different values how much red how much blue and how much green do you want and we look at this by passing in that vector of colors we ended up making them all red if we wanted to change and make them all instead of red i'll make that as zeros here and say let's make them all green I could pass in that so we could individually color the different panels of here but that's going to be a little bit more work and the video is already getting pretty long so I'm going to stop right there and hope that that is a hint to the person that was asking the question all right if you like the video go ahead and hit thumbs up and subscribe and uh, have a great day